Hello, my dear students. Welcome to our first lecture for the Solid State Electronic Course. This is Sam Hablatif, lecturer and the program director in the Electrical Engineering Department. Of course, the first thing I have to say is welcome to our electro, uh, electrical engineering department and welcome to our electronics and communication program. Maybe this is one of the first six courses you are going to have in your first semester in, in the program, wishing you a very fruitful and inshallah, uh, interesting four years of study and hope that you enjoy your study during your next four years in our department and in our program. It's now the solid state electronic course. Again, my name is Samah Hablatif, and in this lecture, I'm going to illustrate a very brief course outline to our course, which will be extended during the semester one across the continuous coming 12 weeks. So please accept my invitation to my slides for the first lecture or Actually, it's lecture number zero, which is the course outline of this module. So please join me to my slides. Okay, welcome again. This is a solid state electronic course. The code is 20 ECE02C. Now this is the title we will use during the next 12 weeks for our module. Now let me please start to open my laser pointer and start to operate the presentation for the lecture number zero with the title course outline. As I mentioned, in this lecture, we are going to illustrate briefly what is the main syllabus of this course, what is our time plan, how we will communicate together, how we will use the online teaching and learning, how we will collect feedbacks and how we will operate office hours or the administrative, let me say, administrative issues related to our course. So let's start please, solid state electronic course. Maybe the first question comes now, what is electronics actually? This is your first electronic course, by the way. So you, you can ask what is electronics? All of, our, all of us know a lot of electronic devices. Your mobile phone is an electronic device. For, by the way, your computer or laptop is an electronic device. Your um, maybe smart car, your AC, your uh, everywhere, uh, your laptop as I mentioned, your iPad or tablet, all these stuffs are electronic devices. So we are going to understand how we should design, construct, implement, fabricate, simulate electronic devices. Of course, this will not be in this course. It will be along the year of study. But in order to understand all these complicated stuff, we have first to start with what is the building unit of this, all these electronic devices. What is the smallest building unit of this device? So let's start this journey with the following demonstrative video. Here we have one of the most famous electronic devices, by the way, which is computers. Computers is one of the top famous electronic uh, devices. So what is the building unit of a computer? Because a computer is an electronic device. If we know that the building unit of a computer, this will be by default the, the building unit of four other electronic devices. So what is the building unit of a computer? So maybe if you open your desktop or laptop, you will, sorry, you will find something called a CPU or the central processing unit. Let's see it again here. If you go open the motherboard and you will find something called the CPU or the central processing unit or what is frankly called the processor, the processor of the computer. But what is inside this processor? What is, we, ha we have to go more deep now. So if you go inside the processor, you will see this famous electronic shape board. You know, this electronic board, sometimes it has a, a blue color, sometimes it has a green color. So this is an electronic board with some electronic component everywhere. So what is inside this electronic board? So let's go more and more deeply. So now we go to find that this small electronic board includes what's called gates. Maybe, I'm not sure, you hear about this word before in your high school or something like that. So this what's called electronic gates. It's some sort of digital 
switches that takes some output decision based on input. So we have what's called AND gate and OR gate and something like that. I believe that you have a digital design course and you will deal a lot with what is the electronic gate. So this is what is inside the uh, electro, uh, this is what is inside the uh, 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 CPU or the central processing unit. Then do we have more? Can we go deep more? Yes. The, the, the question is that oh, the answer is that we can go deep more. Let's see. Inside this gate, you will have a set of electronic devices. This electronic devices is called, and it's very important name for us, by the way, this is called transistors. So transistors is the smallest electronic device that we can deal with in electronics. Transistors can form gates. Gates can form chips, electronic chips. Electronic chips can form Central processing units, central processing units can form computers, laptops, tablets, mobiles, and whatever you need. So from what does this transistor consist of? So let's zoom in this transistor. We will find that this transistor includes three different types of material. It includes on both sides. Let me again use this laser pointer. So... Mm -hmm. It includes semiconductor materials in both sides, insulator in, in, in between, and metals for con conductor uh, for con conducting electricity. So it includes semiconductors, insulators, and metals. So in order to understand electronics, you have first to understand what is the difference between semiconductors, conductors, and metals. Then you should turn on to a study what is meant by transistor and how we can form a transistor. Then you can go to study the gates and then you will be able to study what is meant by electronic chip and then how to make a CPU or how to make a central processing unit. So this is basically the hierarchy. Now we are in the bottom of this hierarchy. In this course, we will be interested in the material and the transistor level, which is the most bottom level of this study. So let's continue our study. For example, this is the core i7 10th generation processor, the most famous, or one of the most famous Intel processor. If you go to search what is the main building unit of this core i7 10th generation processor, you'll find this is a transistor. By the way, this is a transistor. So to understand to what extent does this transistor is a sophisticated device? Let's see this example. Okay, if you see this image, this image, by the way, is taken using what's called scanning electron electro microscope. It's some type of microscope that is dedicated for scanning the electron or the electronic devices. The scale here is 50, uh, 50 nanometers. Okay, so where is the excited? the exciting point what is interesting the scale is 15 nanometer where is the problem so let's try to express how is 15 nanometer is really a small dimension so for example please try to to to, to look on my camera not on the slides for a while what about a single hair in your head a single hair in your head has a diameter of around 100 micrometer so if you try to pick one single hair of your head you will have you will catch a diameter of around 100 micrometer believe it or not this transistor is one over two thousands one over two thousands the dimension of a single hair of your head so this real image on the right hand side indicates one over two thousands of the dimension of a single hair of your head. So you can imagine how much or how many transistors we have in a single processor because, because processor in our computers are somehow dimension in millimeters or centimeters. So you can expect how much transistors we have. Actually, this was one of the very interesting uh, maybe expectations or forecastings made by a very famous scientist whose name is Moore's and he called it um, or people call that 
Moore's law. Moore, in some uh, previous time ago, three, four, five decades ago, said that every 12, uh, sorry, every 18 months, we will have double the number of transistors in the same area. For example, if you start with, let's not now use the annotation for, for a while, please. So if you start with that, okay, I have an uh, area of one centi times one centimeters. Okay, this is an area. Okay, at this time, which is for example, 2008, you can, you can put in this area, 100 transistor. Okay. After 18 months, this number will be doubled. Of course, this example is a very trivial example. This is not a real number, just to give you an illustration. So this is 100 example, 100 transistor at this time slot. When you turn after 18 months from uh, 2008, which is the mid of 2009, you will be able to insert 200 transistor, which is typically double the number of transistor. So how we are going to increase the number of transistor? This is basically has only one solution that you get your transistor smaller and smaller. So as far as you are increasing, decreasing the dimensions of your transistor, then you are adding more transistor in the same area. May now a question will appear. What is the benefit? What is the benefit? What is the added value from adding more and more transistors? Basically, the answer is very easy. Transistor is a building unit, is a processing unit. As much transistor as you will insert, as much as higher speed of processing. So, for example, the core, the dual dual uh, core uh, processor, which is somehow an old-fashioned processor, includes number of transistors less than the core i7 uh, processor. So, as much as uh, transistors you can insert in a certain area, you will have more and more higher speed of processing, which is, of course, the target of any and every computer uh, uh, manufacturer, Intel or uh, AMD or any other computer manufacturer. So uh, this is simply the, the, the Moore's uh, uh, theory or the Moore's law. He does this expectation. He, he said that, please ex uh, believe me, every 18 months we will have double the number of transistors. And actually what is interesting that his expectation comes to true. Now, this is really, we have now in 2018, our transistor dimensions was, uh, sorry, in 2008, our transistor dimension was about 500, uh, sorry, 45 nanometer. Now we have the below 10 nanometer transistor. So this is really interesting. That's why we have higher and higher speeds and higher and higher uh, 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 um, powerful, let me say, uh, uh, processors. So this is the example of, oh, this is the theory of Moore's law. As much as we go with a smaller transistor, we are going with faster technology. That's turned to the word, I believe most of you hear about it, which is nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is everywhere in our field, in electronics, nanotechnology is dealing with to fabricate your transistor in a nano dimension. That's actually nowadays occurs. For example, this transistor is a nano device, as you can see, that dimensions is very, very small. This is 10 nanometer, 6, 7, uh, 12 nanometer. So this is a nano transistor. So the nanotechnology affects the transistor by reducing the area of the transistor uh, and then increasing the number of transistors. Okay, what's after? Actually, people are now thinking with an, a narrower or a smaller and smaller transistors. Now it comes to be that the transistor dimension is comparable to the electron dimension, which is some field, maybe you hear about it, which is under the title of the quantum theory. When you scale down your transistor to be in the same dimension or the same order of magnitude of a electron. In this stage, people start to think about an alternatives. It's not only electrons. What about photons? I don't know if you hear about photons or not. So photons are the small building unit of light. So what about replacing electrons by photons? What, what about having an devices which is operated by photons, not by electrons? This is actually not some sort of science fiction. This is starts to be a true. Researchers everywhere are working to have such alternatives. So this is 
maybe something for the future. Okay, so let's now return back to the ground. Let's now return back to our course. As I mentioned in the, first, in the beginning of my presentation that this is the first course in a track dealing with electronics. And believe it or not, this is somehow 50% of our program. So this track will start with our course, which is solid state electronics. Then we will have a course called electronics one in your second semester in Java. In the second year in this program, you will have two courses. You will have a measurement course in semester two and um, electronics two course in semester one. Then you will have also a digital electronics course and electronics three. This will be delivered in your third year after prep. And finally, you will have the opportunity to take the optional courses with the electronic flavor with the VLSI or very large scale integrated uh, circuits and the embedded systems. This is the scale where you have where we have our electronic courses. Okay, so let's now go into details about our course perspective, our course scope, our course objectives. As I mentioned in my uh, 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 demonstration in the beginning, in order to understand the, the electron, you, you have first to understand the material used to fabricate the electron. So let me say that in the first 30% to 35% of, of our course, we will go into materials. We are going to understand the materials, but please take care. Because when I said the word material, the word material have a huge amount of perspectives. Your colleagues in mechanical engineering start study material. Your colleagues in civil engineering study material. Maybe even in architecture, of course, in chemistry. All these students start the material, but with a, with a different perspective. In our course, we are going to start study material from an electrical perspective. Our target is to distinguish from the pro electrical property between semiconductors, insulators, and conductors, and to study in more depth what's called the semiconductor materials, because as you will know, this semiconductor materials is the key player in our electronics uh, industry and in in electronics applications. The second is we are going to make some sort of bridging. As I mentioned in my first, uh, in my, uh, first demonstration, our target is a transistor. But we will, we will use a bridge to reach the transistor. Our bridge is called a diode. Maybe you hear again about it in your high school. Diode is the very simplest electronic device ever. So in order to study that transistor, we need to have something like a, something which is a bit simpler than a, a, a transistor, which is the diode. So we will start with diodes. We start to understand the theory of operations as, as a, uh, of diodes as a solved example to transfer to the next step, which is transistors. Herein, we are going to deal with the most three famous types of transistors: the metal metal field effect, the metal oxide field effect transistors, the MOSFET, the bipolar junction transistor or the BGT, and the most modern one, which is the tunneling effect effect field transistor or the TFT. These are the three main types of transistors we are going to consider in our solid state course. Okay, let's define our teaching team. Maybe I already defined myself. This is Sam Hab Latif, lecturer from the British University in Egypt, electrical and engineering department. And I, it's a great honor for me to have my colleague, engineer Zahra Ismail, as our teaching assistant for this course. Both of us will work together in order to make life a bit easy for you regarding the electronic course of course. I will have a very brief introduction about myself. I have uh, graduated from Antioch University 2009 electronics and communication pro uh, program or department. I got my master's degree from the same university in 2012 and then using a funded project from the day a day I have been graduated my PhD as assured between Max Planck Institute and University of Duisburg. This is my very brief CV. I joined the BUE maybe 11 years ago in 29 as a TA, then I have been promoted as a lecturer three or four years ago. Also, I have been working in several places related to the electronics, by the way. I have been working in the innovation lab in Heidelberg, which is one of the most famous clean rooms. Clean rooms, by the way, are 
the places where electronic devices fabricated. I also work in uh, the IBM Egypt branch, which is Egypt Nanotechnology Center offered by the Cairo University. Also, I have a postdoc from Erasmus in uh, Max Planck Institute in Germany, and I'm still a guest researcher in the Max Planck Institute. My field of interest as a researcher lies in the field of nanotechnology and electronics, solar cells, and quantum computing. I am a, a sub-team leader for a lab called the Fab Lab. It's located in Building B, maybe one of our uh, maybe uh, aims in this in this uh, course is to show you some demonstration maybe, maybe it will be a virtual demonstration to what we are doing in fab lab maybe also you can use our facilities in implementing your uh, project uh, uh, mo module project as i will mention later so this is a very simple brief about uh, who am i so let's turn to the course content what we are going to study as i mentioned we are going to deal with material Dyes then transistor. This you will find it in the course content. Sorry, this you will find it in the course content. We will have lectures about semiconductor material. We are dealing with materials, but we will give a, a, a special focus on semiconductor materials. We are dealing with then the PN junction, which is the dye. Then we will have the metal oxide semi, uh, semiconductor field effect transistor, which is the MOSFET, and finally the bipolar junction transistors and the TFT. So this is the weeks distribution for our uh, module actually so let's talk about the assessment of course students are always uh, motivated to talk about assessment we have in this course three types of assessment we have the in-class test weighted by 10 per uh, 20 percent by the way as far as i'm recording this lecture this uh, in-class test will be online for 90 minutes and it will be located in week 8. I will show you the complete course plan a few minutes from now. Then we will have a one technical project. Uh, it will be a group project and also I will describe in details how we will implement this one technical project. And then we will have the unseen exam, which is of course the final exam, weighted by 70%. So this is simply the overall distribution of the uh, courses. Uh, or of that content of, of this course, as you can see. 